Good morning, live from Jerusalem, where later today in the big building behind me, which is called Binyane Ha'uma, more about that building later, I'll be going live from, hold on, let's get the picture in, let's uh, take a little picture here. Here's the sixth global forum for combating anti Now, I looked through the program when deciding to come, it was a free invite, so it's a day out. There'll probably be some food and thousands of people all trying to combat anti-Semitism. You know what's missing from the program? Pretty much any reference to Islamic anti-Semitism. So, as I wrote yesterday when I debunked, when I presented Nathan Kotnitz's work debunking the culture of critique, I put that kind of anti-Semitism Number one on my list is Muslim anti-Semitism, the kind that drives some large proportion of one point half, one and a half billion Muslims to um, actually fight wars against Israel, real wars with tanks and bombs and stuff, rather than dank memes. Which brings me on to Count Dankula. I can't believe anybody here, or very few people will even know the story of you, Count Dankula, but I'm going to see if I can try and bring it up what the absolute ridiculousness of prosecuting a man for teaching his dog a trick. Uh, I think it's ridiculous. I think that it's counterproductive. It's not going to, uh, it's not going to destroy the Jewish state uh, if a man teaches his dog uh, how to lift its paw on command. I'm standing here, by the way, in the middle of Jerusalem. The building behind me was actually built after Israel won, won the Eurovision Song Contest the first time, I think with Hallelujah. And then they built this thing to house the competition the next year and then won again. Was that Milk and Honey? I can't remember. I'm not really a trivia buff on the Eurovision. But after winning it the second time in a row, Israel said, no, no, we can't afford to do that next year. And I think Ireland then took the competition. Now, just behind me, if I swing around, that huge thing there is the new, newly, it's in construction, it's the new train station uh, in Jerusalem with a high-speed rail uh, from Tel Aviv uh, that cuts through hills and quite a tunnelling project for the first time in a, well, basically I think the British or the Turks built the, the old railway that we use at the moment and it takes more than an hour to get to Jerusalem by train, an hour and a half or something ridiculous when it takes if you come early, like I just did, it takes 50 minutes. So that train station there is just brand new, being constructed open in a few months. There's a beautiful bridge behind me. You can't really see much of it. Um, th this is the, the sort of entrance to Jerusalem. This is not going to be destroyed by dank memes, okay? As many dank memes as you guys want to make, it isn't going to destroy Israel or really oppress Israel or the Jews very much. And to be honest, the Jews here know about it. It's the, the diaspora Jews are, are really fighting this, this, this anti-Semitism. And it's not a chimera, it's real, it does exist. I mean, it's a terrible bigotry, it's stupid, it's dumb. But the way to, the way to, um, the way to fight that kind of anti-Semitism is just expose it. Let them speak. Let them deny the Holocaust in, in the face of some pretty good evidence. Let them do that shit because I have become a free speech absolutist. I have become a free speech absolutist because all of the laws that oftentimes liberal, left-wing, far-left, progressive Jews support for shutting down free speech will be used against us. And the main thing, as you see in England, is that you've, sh you're, you've now shut down all criticism of Islam. Islam cannot be criticized. And for God's sake, it's probably the same damn laws that people in this anti-Semitism conference are going to be talking about to protect Jews from anti-Semitism or from memes about the gas chambers. Those same laws will also protect Islam. And while you protect Islam, you are going to wind up with your kids being raped by the hundreds of thousands as you have tolerated in the UK since 1975. Look, it's probably going on all over Europe. We just don't know yet. Anyway, this is the sixth or whatever international conference on combating anti-Semitism. It's totally ignoring Islamic anti-Semitism, which is a huge failure. And it's probably gonna overly 
uh, retros it's going to just delve into the tiny little minority of you alt writers and your memes who don't which Count Dankula is not one of that's for sure um, the, the, the real alt right the ones that David Duke following Richard Spencer the, the white ethno nationalists you know I posted on israelicool.com yesterday an article about taking Nathan Conference's work that debunks the culture of critique. I can't believe anybody in here has ever even read culture of critique. They don't know what's in it. They don't understand how to combat that. So in the end, they're just going to call for, for anti-free speech stuff, which is bullshit. So that's where I am. Maybe I'll do some more periscopes if this one gets any kind of an audience later. I'm really early. Anyway, thanks for listening. And I'm Brian of London. I live normally in Tel Aviv, but today I'm in the capital city of the Jewish state Israel, which is, of course, Jerusalem. Good morning again from the ICC, the International Conference Center in Jerusalem, Binyanei Ha'uma. Okay, I'm going to show you. Can you see? I don't know where they are. Yeah, over there. I'm not going to focus on them, but there's the, the armed security team with uh, a bunch of small, probably um, extended handguns, long stocks, extended sighting and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, they're getting their briefing regarding the place today and I'm back at the this um, big uh, global forum for combating anti-semitism now my big complaint yesterday morning was that from the look of the program there was just almost no mention of Islamic anti-semitism Islamic Jew hatred uh, and uh, it got brought up it's not on the program for example, we had a good speech by Ayelet Shaked, who's our justice minister, very young woman, well, comparatively young, uh, and she spoke very well, and she spoke entirely of incitement on social media. And when she speaks of incitement on social media, she only means one thing. She means monitoring Palestinian Authority and uh, Israeli Arabs to a certain degree, and probably some Israeli Jews too, um, for incitement around the conflict here and the vast majority of what she's talking about is Islamic incitement incitement to commit uh, acts of jihad against Jews to go out stab Jews murder Jews run them over and uh, she specifically said that whilst they were working with Facebook quite closely and we also heard from uh, the an executive in charge of uh, kind of like sounds like the whole of the Middle East who's uh, obviously a native French speaker uh, so Facebook were represented here, but Ayelet Shaked said that they get absolutely no cooperation from Twitter, which is interesting because we know that Hamas obviously have an official Twitter account. Uh, and so Ayelet Shaked said from the stage yesterday, and I note she's tweeted it in Hebrew as well, that they're considering legal action against Twitter in Israel. But this again is for the very, very tight and specific, yes, yeah, Saudi's own Twitter, that's true, or, or a big chunk of it. This is for the very specific um, direct incitement to go out and commit acts of terror. We're not really talking about hate speech as some nebulously defined thing. We're talking about direct cartoons that show jihadis stabbing at the necks, cutting at the necks in line with the Quran of Jews. So that's a very, very, very specific. And I would say, you know, I'm a pretty much a free speech absolutist these days. But when Muslims are sending out Islamic, theocratic, uh, rooted in the Quran messages to other Muslims that say, go kill a Jew, I think that's a, that is obviously very dangerous and something that Israel, as the country that it is, is probably correct and right to think about cracking down on. So that brings me over to the conviction in Scotland of Count Dankula. Count Dankula and his small Nazi pug. It is so breathtakingly tone deaf and dumb for 
anybody in the UK to have supported the prosecution of this man. And if there are Jews, which I believe there are, who supported the prosecution of this man for making clearly a joke video. I, I mean, I watched the video again yesterday with a couple of people here. Uh, I, I showed it to some interesting people here. The, the original Nazi pug video. As much as they didn't want to, they laughed. They had smiles on their faces because they understood the context of Count Dankula saying he wants to turn his girlfriend's dog into the most evil thing. So it sets the context that Nazis are evil. It does not glorify the Nazis. It does not it does not encourage people to become Nazis. What encourages people to become Nazis, and you know, I've, I've done my fair share of looking at, at the far right, uh, how they come to believe the things they believe about Jews working against uh, everyone else. What, what, what encourages them to become Nazis, and I'm never gonna blame the victim is, it's far left fucking Jews prosecuting people for a joke. That was, this is England, it's not, I mean, America has a slight lack of understanding of satire. I, I will, you know, that's as far as I'll go. Some parts of America don't really get satire or, or the, the sort of humor that Britain does. But for God's sake, this is the land of, of Monty Python, of faulty towers, of don't mention the war, of, of goose stepping John Cleese talking about you invaded Poland first. This, that country, I, I think back to all the comedy I watched as a child. All of it's actionable. Every one of those comedians would have been locked up, thrown away the keys. There would have, you will be living in a country of no comedy. There will be some gender fucking safe, basically anti-white male jokes. That's all that's left. That's what you can do in England. You cannot make fun of anything. Yeah, look, I'll tell you this. Most people don't know this, but there are two sort of classic schools of thought on how you discuss the Holocaust in comedy. Mel Brooks made the classic movie. Um, uh, it was a movie, it was a stage play, it was a musical. Um, the producers, and that centered around them making a, a, a musical production so vile that it would close on the first night and these guys would walk off with all the insurance money and, and the money of the investors because they wouldn't actually stage the play. And so they invented a musical called Springtime for Hitler. The thing was, it was a roaring success. But So Mel Brooks made this film. Mel Brooks, a Jew and, you know, a, 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 an American Jew. Not so lefty, I think, these days. Anyway, he made that film with Nazi uniforms and goose steppings and, and, uh, and jokes and songs with Hitler saying, I want a little piece of Poland, a little piece of this. That was funny. Now, prior to that, Charlie Chaplin had made the film The Great Dictator. Now, Charlie Chaplin said after that film that had he known how bad Hitler was and would be, he might not have made The Great Dictator because he felt that it trivialized it. But Mel Brooks had, was making his movie um, 20 years later. Everybody knew, but by then it was satirizing. It was making fun of. You can have a debate about it, but you don't fucking put people in prison if you don't like their joke. It's a joke. It is not telling people to go out and be Nazis. It's a joke. And that's where the failure is. And that's where there is a tone deafness amongst left wing Jews. And I've got to say most of the crowd here lean very heavily left and that's why there's no real discussion of the number one danger and the number one source of anti-semitism and the only source of anti-semitism actually murdered three jews last weekend which is islamic anti-semitism two two jews were were run over uh, and died murdered and another one and a guard um, was stabbed in jerusalem so the scorecard is Islamic anti-Semitism three, all other forms of anti-Semitism, no murders last weekend. And yet nothing on the pro, well, there, almost no mention on the program. La yesterday I went to a thing about uh, uh, tackling Arab uh, press, but you know, they danced around the subject. You know, the, 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 you have to dance around the subject because Anti-Semitism is baked into the Quran. That's, you know, people know my view. Anyway, 
Sorry, Count Dankula, uh, for what, you know, I'm not responsible for the actions of every Jew, obviously, but I am somewhat pissed off and ashamed that there are any Jews who contributed to the situation you're in. Um, and uh, that's it. By the way, I, most of the crowd here has flown in. I mean, you know, there's some local people, but uh, it's a three day event. I didn't go to the first night. I'm not going to stay for the whole day here today. It's a three day event on anti Semitism. It's, it's all a bit negative because it's all fighting a negative thing. You know, it's like, oh, 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 anti Semitism is so terrible. It is, it is terrible. It's uh, very, been around a long time, but. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm underwhelmed. I, I prefer more optimistic looking things. We used to have something called the uh, President's Conference. Shimon Peres used to organize a big shindy on his birthday, which was also very left wing. But it was sort of, it had some technology in it, had some sort of life and some, some of us achieving stuff instead of just wailing and gnashing our teeth. I don't, uh, you know, we beat this stuff. I mean, we, we, we're here in Israel. We're building the place like crazy. We're living here. We've got we've got a safe place for Jews to come, if a, a, a proper Nazi Holocaust style anti-Semitism rises up somewhere in the world. At least this time we've got somewhere to go, and that's where we'll come. We'll come here, um, and that's probably you know Europe's look, not looking great. I would hope that Jews don't have to leave Europe, but if it has to happen. We'll make room. We'll figure out how to have enough water. We'll figure out how to have enough power to run the air conditioners and uh, to keep them all happy. Um, but there you go. Yeah, just to sh that little crowd in the background there. That's the uh, that's the security detail necessary to keep this this huge building. Let's have a show you the building. Nice angle here. This is the inside. There is a huge auditorium and other things. That bridge is it's called David's Harp, uh, and it was hugely controversial. Hugely controversial when it was camera. Uh, it was hugely controversial when it was put up, but um, because it's sort of new, very new looking, and um, but everybody loves it now. It sort of marks the entrance to Jerusalem. All right, that's enough for me. I'll report back if we manage to mention Islam again. It's like a secret code. Okay, bye. I'm Brian of London, by the way.